basic amplifier concepts. When people think of an amplifier, they usually think of their home stereo system. In a home stereo system, you, you've got a signal that comes out of your record player or your CD player, and that gets delivered to an amplifier. And it gets delivered to the amplifier. It's a very small signal. And the job of the amplifier is to increase that signal and increase its magnitude without changing the shape of the signal. You don't want the amplifier to be distorting the uh, audio in any way. And then that gets delivered to a load, which has a couple of speakers. And the speakers vibrate. And they push air back and forth, which we interpret as sound. Now, when we think about electronics technology, we don't like to think of these things as, as physical blocks. We like to think of them as more like functional descriptions. So for the signal, we like to think of that as like a signal generator. So here is a voltage coming out of a signal generator, and that gets delivered to the input of the next stage through an RS, a series resistance, or an output impedance of the amplifier. At the end of this, over here, this output, the signal is going to get bigger, and it's going to go to a load, which we like to think of as some kind of a resistance, not a speaker. And this can be a resistance, an actual resistive thing, or it can also be an XL, like a speakers are inductive. And so we would think of this load as an impedance. And then the part in the middle here, the amplifier, we think of that as something called the two-port model. And the two-port model takes voltages and currents on the input, and it amplifies them through this thing called a dependent voltage source, and it delivers them to the load through the output side over here, and that makes the signal bigger. Closer look at the two-port model. Uh, on the input side here, what you do have on the input side is an input impedance. And what this represents is all of the resistors and inductors and capacitors looking into the input of the amplifier is reduced down to a single impedance. And we do that by thevenizing. So this is the input side of our two-port model. And it has a Z in. And if we apply a voltage to the input here, then some current will flow into the two-port model. In the middle of the two-part model, we have something called a dependent voltage source. Now, a dependent voltage source is a voltage source whose value depends on a voltage or a current someplace else in the circuit. So it doesn't have a fixed value. It has a dependent value, and the, uh, it is dependent on something else. In this one here, we say that the output, the voltage across these terminals is AV times BN. So it is some multiple of what's coming in. So this is AV, this is BN over here. This voltage is AV times that voltage. The gain factor is called AV, and that's like 5, 10, 15, 20. And then the voltage across the terminals is AV times BN. Finally, we have an output impedance here. All sources have a, have a non-zero output impedance. And when you hook something up to it, if I hook something up to this, we get a voltage divider. So no source is ideal. All sources have a non-zero output impedance. Let's take a quick look at what happens when we start hooking an amplifier to the generator and the load. So on the input side, we would say that Vn, the voltage that appears at the input of the amplifier, is the generator voltage multiplied by this voltage divider here. So Vn equals Vg times Vdiv. That is an attenuation. That is a, a amplifier gain less than one that results in a lower voltage at Vn than what we're putting in. And the attenuation is from the voltage divider created by these two resistors. In the middle, we have a dependent source here whose value is AV times Vn. This is an amplification stage. This is a point where gain is greater than 1. AV could be 5, which means that this voltage is 5 times what's appearing on the input. And because it's a, a source which has a, a non-zero Z out, 
the output voltage here is equal to the dependent source voltage multiplied by the attenuation factor created by this voltage divider. So there's two resistors here. We get a voltage divider. This voltage is this voltage times the voltage divider. So that's another attenuation. So when we start putting these functional blocks together, what you'll see is that it becomes a series. It becomes of a series of attenuations followed by an, an amplification followed by another attenuation. Let's do a quick example with some numbers. So I put in some numbers. The generator output impedance is, is 600 ohms. So is that in 50 ohms at out and the load is 50 ohms. I pick these numbers to make the math easy. And gain is 10. So start off Vn equals Vg times Vdiv. First question I get when I give these problems out is a student say, I don't know what to do because I don't know what Vg is. What we're trying to figure out here is how much bigger the voltage is. You don't really care what went in. You just care about how big it is. So if you don't have a voltage or you haven't been given a voltage, just go ahead and pick one. And I literally mean pick one. The easiest way to do this is that for your input, you say Vg equals one volt. And all of a sudden, as soon as I say that, you say, okay, now I know how to solve this problem. The Vn is 1 volt times 600, sorry, 600 over 1200. So Vn, a voltage divider is created. Vn is less than Vg. Vn equals 1 volt times 600 over 1200. That's the voltage that appears on the input of the amplifier. The dependent source kicks that voltage up 10 times. So the voltage across the dependent source is 10 times Vn. So that would be 10 times Vn. That's the voltage across the source. That voltage gets delivered to the load through another voltage divider. So we would say that V out is the dependent voltage source times the voltage divider, which in this case is, is whatever is on the dependent source times 50 over 100. Let's put some numbers in. So Vn is equal to Vg times 600 over 1200 times 10, which is the, the dependent source gain factor, times 50 over 100. Now what I want to do is I want to take Vg here, and I want to put it down. I want to divide both sides by Vg. Do a little bit of algebra. Put Vg down here. Now I have V out over Vg, and I'm comparing the output voltage to what's going in. Well, that's equal to 0.5. So that's this thing it goes down there. VG went down there. 0.5 times 10 times 0.5. Multiply all that out, you get 2.5. 2.5 volts? No. The output voltage is 2.5 times bigger than the input voltage. This is a gain, not an absolute value of voltage. So AV, which is amplification voltage, in this problem we went V out over VG, it's 2.5 times bigger. So AV equals V out over GEG, that is volt per volt. And if you divide volts by volts, they will cancel out. So it's 2.5 times bigger. It's a scalar. There are no units. It's a multiplied factor. Now, usually when we do AV, when we solve for AV, we don't usually start at the generator. We don't actually know what the generator voltage is, especially if it's been hooked up to the circuit and this is a relatively large value, and we don't know what that is. So usually what we do is we want to calculate AV, voltage gain, of the amplifier. We do it from Vn to V out. And in this case here, we would say, well, if I put one volt here, then I'd have 10 there, and then I'd get the voltage divider. I'd get the voltage divider, which would mean there would be 5 here. So in this example, AV equals V out over Vn, which is 5. 5 volts per volt, which is 5 times bigger, which is a scalar, which has no units.
thing we're going to look at. We figured out what the gain in voltage is, but since we're delivering a, since we're putting out a larger voltage to a smaller impedance, there's actually a current gain as well. The current gets bigger. So there's a term called AI, which is amplification current, which is I out over I in, and that is amps per in, amps per amp. How many amps do I get out for every amp put in? And in this example here, we would say that AI is I out over I in. Well, how would we calculate I out? We would say that I out is V out over Z out. So I out is this voltage divided by this impedance. How do you calculate I in? You'd say that V in over Z in. So let's say I had one volt here going into 600 ohms. I'd say one volt over 600. That would give me the input current. Then we could put some numbers in for that because we already solved for these. Uh, well, or we know what these are. So 5 volts are over 50 ohms and 1 volt over 600 ohms. That is 60 amps per amp. So just you know, you've got to take a note of this. It's actually negative because the voltage gain is positive. The current gain is going to be negative. I'm going to explain that later. But AV and AI always have opposite signs. So AP is amplification power. That's P out over P in. And it's watts per watt. This is the third one here, power, power gain. Uh, let's run that through. So AP is going to be, well, it's going to be P out over P in, which is going to be I out. So power out is going to be I out times V out. So what power does this load get? I would say it gets I V. And on the input side here, what, what power does goes into the input on this resistor here? I would say that's this current times this voltage. So P in is I in over V in, and P out is I out times V out. Let's regroup this fraction into I out over I in and V out over V in. Because we already know what this is. We saw this before. That's current gain, and this is voltage gain. So power gain is simply AI times AV. However, it's an absolute value. Power gain has no phase associated with it. It's an hour, an, an average energy delivered to the circuit. So it has no phase. AP has no polarity. So AP in this example, P over PN, AI times AV. Let's bring those numbers back. They were minus 60 times 5. That's going to be 300 watts per watt. 300 watts delivered to the load for every 1 watt input into the circuit. We would say that the power gain is 300 times bigger. It's a scalar. There are no units to AP. And there is no polarity. I said that I would explain why AV and AI are opposite signs. So I'm going to do that now. So this is your two-part model, and this is the way that they assigned the positive voltages and currents in the two-part model. They said this is positive voltage. When that's positive, that's a positive VN. And when current goes that way, that's a positive IN. On the output side here, this is when this is positive, that's positive V out. And when current goes this way, that's positive I out. So that's our two-port model with the polarities of V and I shown, assigned voltage and current polarities. Note, positive current is showing shown as being into the ports on both sides. So I in is always, I in and I out are always going into the two-port model. Let's do an example. Let's say I put one volt on the input. So that would put a positive voltage here, the way that this... Uh, the way that this supply is drawn, that's a positive volt here. That would result in a positive voltage appearing across that end. The dependent source would amplify that and put a positive voltage here. And then when I attach a load, a little bit of current would flow, and this would be a positive side of the load. So this was positive on the input. This was positive on the output. Positive V in results in positive V out, and therefore the Voltage gain is positive. 
However, putting a positive voltage on here results in current flowing into the circuit in a clockwise direction that is the same direction as a signed current. When it gets amplified, the current flows on the output side in this direction. It flows from positive in this direction through the load. And so the output current is flowing this way. That is going in a direction opposite to what is, has been assigned as positive current. So when I have a positive voltage going in, I get a negative current going out. So positive V in results in negative I out and therefore negative current gain. So AD and AI are always different signs simply because of the way they drew those arrows. Uh, a couple other quick notes. Two-port model is often shown with a triangle symbol. So this is your dependent, this is the dependent voltage source here in the middle. So it's AD times VN. The output voltage here is AD times what appears here. There's your Z in, there's your Z out. Uh, the goal, the reason we're doing all this is that we want to take an amplifier schematic like the one shown here and we want to reduce it down to a simpler model so that we can attach and detach loads and, and kind of see what happens without having to recalculate everything. So analyzing uh, Transistor uh, analyzing amplifiers basically is to turn the schematic into a couple of two-port models, which makes it easier to figure out what's going on. Uh, the other goal of sub analysis is to come up with um, the other goals of analysis to come up with our our voltage gains, our gain factors, voltage gain, current gain, power gain, and then we can use the two-port model. To figure out the impact that a change in load would make and figure it out very quickly.